Why you looking for? Look at somebody and tell them I love the word. Uh -uh, you ain't no love word lover. Look at somebody and tell them I love the word. Second Kings chapter five. y'all to help me this Sunday and help yourself next Sunday. Right. <laughs> you help me this week, help yourself next week. Right. Second Kings chapter 5. Count When you find Second Kings 5, say uh-huh. Uh -huh. So look at that, wait on me. I wait on you. Count I'm going to preach until I feel better. in your way. I, I was reading before I came to the church today. Paul says, when I am weak, he makes me strong. Yeah. Yeah. And so and so today I'm looking for him to make me. Because somebody needs to hear a word today. So, somebody's going through something and you need a word from God. Mm, your I, I know he's a miracle working God. I was in, uh, I was in, I was, why do you find Second Kings chapter 5? I was in Montgomery Thursday night, and, and the, the, the worship can't even be explained. The, the power of God can't even be explained. You, you couldn't see it. I don't even think. That, that's the only clip nobody put on Facebook because everybody was going in themselves. Oh, oh, I, couldn't, I couldn't even explain. Here's what happened. The thing got so hot. I don't even know what I was preaching about. I, 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 don't know. I think I was talking about it ain't over until it's over. And at the end of the thing, we went up into a worship mode, right? And so I, I began to minister under the Spirit of God and the anointing of God. And the people began to flood the altar. It was so thick that people were just falling out, just hitting the ground, hitting the ground. I mean, it was, it was breakthroughs and deliverance and yokes were being destroyed. All right, so I got finished and I turned around and walked up and back up in the pulpit. So as I turned around, Bob said, hey, where have you got to come back? Well, that woman right there. Uh, said she can't feel her legs. I looked at her and looked like somebody had her leg bent. I'm talking about her leg was, was, was all the way up under and crumped up like that. I knew it was a spirit that had attacked the woman at the altar. I said, I said, I know the devil ain't gonna wreck this meeting like this. That's just what I said. I said, I know well the devil ain't gonna wreck my meeting like that. Come on, I said, not tonight. I got out the pulpit and, and I could see that this was a, a spiritual demonic attack on this woman. Yeah, yeah. This woman was crying. She was screaming because she ain't felt nothing like that. And, and so I started praying. I started calling other people up to pray. And I just kept saying, the blood of Jesus. Yeah. The blood of Jesus. Yeah. How many of you know there's power in the blood? I need some help. I just kept saying, and the woman just kept screaming because that thing had a bit. Yeah. Go ahead, she was bit. Told two women to come up here and just rub her legs. So we're gonna keep praying, keep praying. And I thought about that scripture where Peter says, "Silver and gold have I none. What I got, I'm gonna give it to you." He says, "In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk." And so I quoted that, and it looked like it eased a little bit. But the spirit hit me, and I said, "God, how the devil gonna mess this meeting up like this? Because when the people leave, they ain't gonna talk about I put the meat, but they gonna talk about this woman who definitely can't walk." I said, God, you can't get no glory out of this. And God said to me, what you're seeing, Jones, is a physical manifestation of a spiritual situation. God, I don't understand what you're saying. He says, he says, I'm getting ready to bring this woman out into a new walk. He said, a spiritual thing. He said, and any time I'm getting ready to take somebody to the next level in their spiritual walk, the enemy's job is to try to cripple them walk. Yeah. He says, the enemy's job. He says, so what you got to do is speak to the spirit. Yeah. And as soon as I said something in the spirit, Carwell is here. Nanny them was there. As soon as I said something in the spirit, it's just like somebody took a, a pair of scissors and cut a rubber band in a woman's legs. No, you I'm, I'm still standing there, and the church is going crazy. The woman stands up, and I see both of her ankles turn. She didn't even stand up on her legs. And I just kept saying, miracle work in Jesus. Miracle work in Jesus. Miracle work in Jesus. Miracle. And I said, miracle work in Jesus. You can see the woman's legs 
Yeah. Yeah. So, well, you know, uh, in just no time at all, the woman walked on her own two legs back to her seat. Now, when I looked at the church, I'm talking about folks was up under the pews going in. I'm talking about folks up under. I ain't talking about no play church now. I'm talking about folks just sitting there looking. I'm talking about, I'm talking about from young to old. Negro was up under the pews going in. Whenever you see God move in front of your eyes, you gotta be crazy not to worship. And how many believe that same miracle worker is here today? Come on. I'm telling you, whatever you need from God, He's a miracle worker in Jesus. So, so I want you to understand that we're moving into a season now that, that you're going to begin to see spiritual attacks. But then you're going to begin to see yeah. spiritual manifestation. Come on now. If the devil would have left it like that, the devil would have been more powerful than God. Yeah. And anything that's going to steal God's glory here in your head. Y'all ain't feeling what I'm saying. Yeah. I'm telling you, these are the days that whenever something come up against you, I want you to just plead the blood. Yeah. Plead the blood. Plead the blood. You got problems in your house? Just plead the blood. Your body ain't feeling good? Just plead the blood. Your money is wrong? Just plead the blood. The blood reaches to the highest mind. I'm preaching already. Y'all know what y'all waiting on. The blood flows to the Lord. Ain't, ain't. The blood never loses its power. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Look, at, look at chapter 5, verse 1. Miracle working Jesus. Yeah. Somebody here needs a mind. Oh, God, that's what I'm going to preach about. I just thought about how God just put that thing together. Yeah. Miracle work of Jesus. Now, Naaman, captain of the host, king of Syria, was great and honorable in the eyes of his master. Because of him, the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was a mighty man of valor, but he was a leper. And the Sumerians, Sumerians had gone out and raided and had brought back captive a little girl from the land of Israel. And she waited on Naaman's wife. And then she said to her mistress, if only my master were in the view of the prophet that's in Samaria, for he would heal him from his leprosy. Verse four, and Naaman went in and told his master, saying this and that, said the little girl from the land of Israel. Verse nine, skip down, says, now Naaman went to the house with horses and chariot and stood at the door of Elijah's house. And Elijah sent a messenger to him saying, watch this, go and wash in Jordan seven times. Somebody said seven times. Yeah, and your flesh shall be restored back to you and you shall be clean. Verse 14, and I'm done. So he went down and dipped seven times. Somebody said seven times. Yeah, in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Can you say amen? That's enough. You can be seen in the presence of God. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of God shall stand forever. Verse 14 again, because that's what I want to draw this topic from for just for a moment. He said, so he went down and dipped seven times in the Jordan. All right. And his flesh was restored like the flesh of a newborn baby. So he went down and dipped seven times in Jordan, and his flesh was restored like a new he went down and dipped seven times in Jordan, and his flesh was restored. Like a newborn child. I'll talk for a moment using as a subject. I'll do whatever it takes. I'll do whatever it takes. Just look at somebody and tell them whatever it takes. Uh-uh, that's haters. Find a